And the Medes and Persians took over the kingdom of Babylon, the most powerful nation on earth. By the authority of the gods of the Medo-Persian Empire, I anoint and crown thee, O Darius, king of Babylon. Long live King Darius! Darius! Cyrus! Nebuchadnezzar was a great king, a marvelous organizer. But the kings after him, oh, they were the exact opposites. No wonder Babylon fell only a few years after Nebuchadnezzar's death. And this, my captain, shall be an object lesson to me. I am going to reorganize Babylon after the manner in which Nebuchadnezzar did. You shall help me. Yes, Your Majesty. Have any of the prisoners been put to death yet? No, Your Majesty, except, of course, Belshazzar himself and a few of his closest officers who died the night we took Babylon. Ah, perfect. See that none of them is executed for any reason at all until I have talked to each and every one of them. His Majesty talked to prisoners? Why not? In this manner I shall discover who are with us and who are against us. They'll all say they are on our side, Your Majesty. I realize that, Captain. But I shall decide by the manner in which they say it, and by answers to other questions. Why, I may even discover some who were officers under Nebuchadnezzar himself. Those are the ones I'll question very carefully. I might as well start immediately. Bring the prisoners before me, Captain, one by one. <laughs> You were an officer in Belshazzar's court? A prince and a governor. Is that the manner in which you speak to your king? You are not my king. My king is dead. Captain, execute this one. Bring in another. Well, of course I'm on your side, Your Majesty. Why? Well, you conquered Babylon. I have to join you or I'll lose my head. Captain, this one too. Send in another. This one seems to have good ideas, Captain. Perhaps I can use him. Keep him under guard in the outer chamber. Send in another. There's only one left, Your Majesty. A, a rather old man. I, I doubt, Your Majesty, if oh, an, he... an old man, huh? Hmm, then he is more likely to have known Nebuchadnezzar. Bring him in. Long live Darius, king of Babylon. You recognize and honor me as king of Babylon? His majesty is king of Babylon, and I have a great respect for the authority of any office, small or great. You approve of the manner in which I became king of Babylon? O oh, king, thou sittest upon the throne of Babylon because the king of kings willed it so. King of kings? Who is he? He is the god I serve and worship, your majesty. He giveth kingdoms, and he taketh them away. Therefore, O king, I shall serve thee to the best of my ability. Hmm. This is a new outlook. I like it. Your name? Daniel, your majesty. And your position and duties under King Belshazzar? Well, I'm afraid that I had no official title or duty under Belshazzar, your majesty. <laughs> I imagine you were too good for his liking. Perhaps you served in some capacity under... Uh, Nebuchadnezzar? Yes, Your Majesty. What position did you hold? Scribe, perhaps? Prime Minister, Your Majesty. Prime Minister? You were Nebuchadnezzar's Prime Minister? He was kind enough, Your Majesty, to trust me with that position. Kind enough? You were Prime Minister to the greatest power on earth, and yet you... You don't even brag about it. Oh, King, be it known unto thee that what I have been and what I am is not because of any worth of my own, but because I serve a just and merciful God. And to your majesty, Nebuchadnezzar was a great king and my friend. And you were his friend. I have no doubt of that whatsoever. I am beginning to understand why he made you his prime minister. These things are what made him a great king. Uh, Daniel, I... I would like to talk further with thee in private. I wish to know more about thy god and Nebuchadnezzar. In the morning, in my private chambers...
this has been a revealing as well as pleasurable talk, Daniel. I need you in my court. Your wisdom and statesmanship, your tact and courtesy, and your fidelity to right principles will be a good guide and example to the other members and officers of my court. You three men are herewith appointed as presidents over the hundred and twenty governors of the whole kingdom. First among you will be Daniel. You other two will be accountable directly to him. He will establish your duties and give directions. You may withdraw. Long live to rise, King of Babylon. It's not right. Right? It's a crime. Appointing Daniel a captive from Jerusalem over us. Huh. Well, we are Medes and Persians, loyal to our king and country. And what do we get? A foreigner over us. Huh. An old man at that. Let's get rid of him. You're forgetting that Daniel has somehow managed to gain the favor of the king. We wouldn't dare touch Daniel or off would come our heads. <laughs> our only chance is to find something against him concerning his god. It is well known that he serves first his god, secondly... His king. And the king knows this as well as we do. Daniel's fidelity to his god is one of the things the king likes about Daniel. Yes, but the king is basically a proud king, jealous of his power. Daniel is true above all else to his god. Certainly we can make these two facts work to our... Uh, I think I have an idea. We will go to the king, all 122 of us, and flatter the king into thinking... Therefore, O king, thy humble princes and presidents desire that thy wisdom and understanding, justice and mercy be spread abroad, so that all shall know of thy greatness. With this in mind, O king, we have prepared a royal statute and decree that whosoever shall ask anything of any god or man for thirty days, save of thee, O king, he shall be cast into the den of lions. This is the parchment, your majesty, upon which we have written the decree. Sign the writing, O king, and establish the decree that it not be changed, according to the laws of the Medes and Persians, which altereth not. I did not realize that my princes and presidents were so solicitous of my welfare. I shall sign the decree. Then shall my greatness and fame be known throughout the length and breadth of the land. Daniel is kneeling, facing Jerusalem, and praying to his God. Of course. We knew his loyalty would cause him to worship his God, regardless of anything, even a king's decree of death. <laughs> Come, let us make the thing known to his majesty. No, 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 not yet. We will watch until he has prayed three times. Then we shall tell the king. <laughs> O king, didst thou not sign a decree that any man who shall ask a petition of God or man, save of thee, shall be cast into the den of lions? I did. I most certainly did. And it cannot be altered. O king, we... Uh, that is... Uh, your majesty, Daniel regardeth not thee, nor the decree that thou hast signed, but maketh petition to his God three times daily. Daniel? Yes. Yes, I see it clearly now. It was not zeal for my honor and glory that led you to propose the decree, but jealousy of Daniel. And I, I was too proud to see through your flattering words. And know, O king, that the law of the Medes and Persians is that no decree or statute which the king establisheth may be changed. Yes, I know. According to the law of the Medes and Persians, I have no choice but to order the arrest of Daniel. See to it, Captain. At eventide, take him to the lion's den. I shall be waiting there. All right, Captain. Do your duty. Man! Move the stone from the mouth of the den! <laughs> Take the ropes and lower him into the den. Daniel, Daniel, thy God whom thou servest so faithfully, he will deliver thee. 
Oh, Daniel, Daniel. <laughs> Roll the stone again over the mouth of the den. Oh. I, I will seal the stone myself with my signet and the signet of the Lord's.